The no malarkey tour is making its way across Iowa, and Mayor Pete is clapping back at claims that he stole Joe Biden's health care plan. <laughs> we are back with Chair and Professor of Political Science at Howard University, Ravi Perry, and also Washington Examiner commentary writer Joe, <laughs> Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. Tom Rogan. I wish. Yeah. Tom yeah. Rogan, our favorite personal yeah. Rogan. Yeah. Right. Joe. Although, Joe, if you want to have us on, we would love that. Please. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so originally Joe Biden and his team had sort of signaled that they weren't really playing to win in Iowa, that they weren't worried about Iowa, they weren't worried about New Hampshire, they were only focused essentially on winning South Carolina. Right. Well, they seem to be a changing up their approach. He's on this no malarkey <laughs> bus tour, which I had to translate for yeah. soccer because yeah, he yeah. doesn't speak I boomer. I said, I don't speak boomer. <laughs> Somebody please tell me what no malarkey means. <laughs> anyway. Which apparently means no B. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah. That's he's what he feel, likes to He's talk. feeling his oats out in yeah. Iowa, especially Kamala. I mean, Kamala came for him. She's now out of the race. That's got to be a good feeling. In spite of weathering many months of attacks, he seems to be holding fast at the top of the polls. Right. And now, Tom, he's actually playing to win in Iowa. What do you think of strategy change? I think he, the campaign are doing that because of the sort of bumbling uncertainty that sort of surrounds him now, like this negative aura. The risk of ignoring those early states is that the identity would be shaped for him. Right? Yeah, the, the exactly. It becomes yeah. reinforcing. Right. Because All the other failure. candidates, right. energetic, here are our ideas, and old Joe Biden doing the same malarkey and making <laughs> random comments, yeah. you know, it, it just de declines his brand. So I think yeah. there's a really saying we've got to roll the dice a bit here. Yeah, that, no, that, that's what it is, Robbie. I, it's that he is betting it all on electability. He's doing very well in South Carolina, he's doing very well in Nevada, you know, by all accounts doing decently in California. But if he came in fourth in both of those states, in Iowa and New Hampshire, that is what they're worried could shift the game. So if he comes in what second? I mean, here's the thing: if he comes in first in Iowa, I think it's game over. I think you're it, done. it actually is like he will be the nominee. Mm. Um, but that's that's what he has to fight for. That's what he's doing his bus tour on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, I, and I think the the, um, the the writing is on the wall, so to speak, for yeah. Joe Biden's campaign. Um, and and and. and, and the challenge is going to be for him is how he's going to coalesce the Democratic Party uh, around him as candidates continue to fall sure. and, 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 and drop out of the race. And that is something that I'm not so sure he's going to have an easy time with. Right. Um, uh, he, he has stayed on top of the polls because his support has been consistent. It also hasn't really grown. Um, and we have to see uh, to the extent it's going to continue to grow now that candidates run, go out the race. So how many Kamala supporters, for example, are going to go over to right. Joe Biden? Well, she only had 4% of the vote, and so it, it looks like it's equally going to be split. But one thing that's interesting yeah. is during his Iowa tour, Tom, he's been flying to New York City in between. His first event was at the home of Millie and Aunt, uh, Arnie Glimcher, a money. art dealer, the founder of the Pace Gallery. <laughs> his second event, the 52nd floor of a high-rise midtown Manhattan held at the home of David Steinberg of Zeta Global. He introduced the former vice president, said unlike some other people running, he might be able to carry the swing states. So in the middle of his Iowa <laughs> Ability. malarkey tour, he's going to need to downtown Manhattan to go raise more and more money. That's, oh, that's really the problem. I think that's a bunch of malarkey. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> that's the real problem for him, right? I mean, like, right. nobody actually gives this guy money. Like, pe right. real people don't give him actual money. And again, it's, it's, it's like, going gonna, gonna to be a problem as that, you know, you, when you see that voting block with to the progressive wing, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, whether those votes would change over or not theoretically in the future is another issue. But, you know, you can see as we build it, into the next year, the narrative here, you know, I'm out trying to get, you know, here's my great college yeah. tuition plan or Bernie, right. I'm the old reliable and Joe, you know, he's there for the millionaires. Right. You know, he's, it doesn't fit with the class warfare narrative. It couldn't be more of a stark contrast, yeah. right? Well, what is it? But Bernie Arnold has four said. million individual donations or something yeah. like that. I mean, that's I mean, insane. That is, that's the thing like, that's so interesting about Biden's campaign is he has, he's weathered all these storms. I mean, he couldn't be more sort of verbally incontinent. Every right. debate, every <laughs> sentence, you're like, where great, is this going? Website. Everybody's <laughs> holding their breath, like uncomfortable, like, please don't talk about race. We're already getting nervous here. And yet, there he is at the top, holding strong. And so, does the fact that he seems to have zero enthusiasm, I mean, look, I get Twitter's not real life, but the guy, you don't see any Joe Biden supporters on no, Twitter. No. You don't see him anywhere. It's he not. goes, his events are like Joe sparsely attended. Shirt. One shirt. One? Yeah, and I was like, oh, there it is. It's actually there, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, his events are sparsely attended at the big Iowa confab thing that everybody had their stands oh, yeah, filled out gosh. and their rockets. His were literally like, the, like taped up, no one there. And yet he's at the top of the polls. Like, 
Can you be the front runner? Can you win the nomination when the enthusiasm and energy level is so incredibly low? Well, yes, you can win the nomination. Yeah. The question is, can you can win you the win general the election? Yeah, right. right. Uh, and that's where the electability uh, yeah, thing and, really falls apart. Right. And, that, and that, that, that's going to be his challenge because he, he can win the nomination. Uh, that, that is obviously we've seen, we've seen kind of how well he's done so far. The question for him is not going to be whether or not he can win the Democratic nomination. It's going to be whether or not he can actually win an election versus Donald Trump. And that's, that's and well it does and, it, and that is really a toss up still uh, because Donald Trump is 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 um, very fervently uh, anti Joe Biden and is waiting for Joe Biden to become the nominee. I mean, yeah. he's salivating. Yeah. We can't wait for that to happen. And I'm not so sure, based on the debate performance and some of his gaps, that Joe Biden is really ready to go toe to toe I mean, with Donald Trump. He can't handle Julian Castro. Right. How's he going to yeah. handle exactly. Donald right. Trump? Exactly. Right. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to beat Donald Trump. He's like, checks notes like right. a drum. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. I was like, I, like, oh. I think so, man. Yeah. 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 But, you know, yeah. as the presumptive moderate, do you know that? His his campaign would say, OK, you know, whatever his issues, when we get into next year, if he's the nominee, a lot of independents say, well, I don't think he's going to, I'm not so scared of him. His right. sort of bold policy ideas aren't so bold. But President Trump, you know, that, that yeah, know. but it's a sad I narrative, know. right? Well, and actually, it could even work. Honestly, look, this could all work. I don't think it will, but I'm saying okay. that. It's a, it's a, it is a bet that you can make, but there's a lot of downside. Democrats right? have yeah. this weird, like, I don't really like it, but I got to suck it up for, and vote right. for him. Like, yeah. I got to just suck they it up really and go do. for the person. I mean, his wife even said that essentially yeah. explicitly. Like, you got to yeah. suck it up and vote for yeah. Joe because he's the only one. And when we they do believe that, it, yeah. they believe yeah. it. But look when we do that, right? We nominate Al Gore. <laughs> President Al Gore, we nominate President John Kerry, we nominate President Hillary Clinton, right? None of these people, those were all the people that we were told we had to vote for if we wanted to win, and they all lost. Right. The only one, and Ryan Grimm points this out, the yeah. only time we like bucked that trend and went with the guy that wasn't the electability candidate was Barack Hussein Obama, and guess what? He was president, and he got reelected, by the way, as well. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and I mean, the last thing I do want to talk about, because this is always interesting, Nate Silver said after Kamala dropped out that if Democratic Party wants to feel this representative, of its members, he probably shouldn't have two states as white as Iowa and New Hampshire vote the first of every year. But Steve Kornacki also rightfully points out that if South Carolina had gone first instead of Iowa in 2008, that Hillary Clinton would have been the nominee instead of Barack Obama. What do you think, Tom? Well, I mean, you know, there are two countermining uh, yeah. ideas there. Yeah. But, you know, ultimately, I think that playing the the idea of what primaries first, mm -hmm. you know, is sort of getting around the main issue. And the main issue yeah. is, you know, that you have a lot of different candidates still in a crowded race, mm -hmm. and people are going to have to make up their mind. You know, people, are, the candidates are going to have to do better to get those voters that they need, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, I think I it's think that, you're right, that's, which that's is don't blame the process, actually fight for it. Yeah, right. that's true, but yeah. I, I will say, you know, I mean, Iowa and New Hampshire are not representative. Kornak's well, point is very well taken. Yeah. But also, I mean, there's this yeah. assumption, too, which is very much belied by what we see playing out right now, that voters of color are going to necessarily support candidates of color. Obviously, in the Democratic primary right now, they're not. Mm -hmm. But I do think the fact that Iowa and New Hampshire aren't representative skews the process. It makes this sort of affluent white liberal vote much more dominant and much more important than it should be. Look, the only reason Pete is having a moment right now is because he can do well in Iowa and New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. and that's a good point. And what do you think, Robbie? Yeah, yeah. well, I He's he's doing well because yeah. he's a Midwesterner and and Iowa uh, bodes well for him there. Uh, but also, you know, what's what's unique here is that you know we don't have candidates of color. Uh, who necessarily are going to be supported by people of color, right. as we've seen with Kamala Harris and Cory Booker and Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang, and, right? Folks are not necessarily voting for them just because they look like them. That right. that descriptive representation era has really past us, uh, it really kind of, I think, died in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I think it's a, for good reason, because voters are smart. Voters are looking for someone who represents their substantive interests, right. not necessarily just their descriptive interests. And that's why Joe Biden is at the top. And and that's also, though, why I think Buttigieg has a shot, because, of, because he has a moderate kind of a stance. And because the progressive wing of the party with Warren and with Sanders is really split, and they do not have have a strong record of coming out uh, in general elections and, and voting in large numbers. Mm -hmm. It's possible that if Biden continues to be a gas machine, that Buttigieg then becomes the moderate uh, voice of the party. And that would be 
odd, uh, but well, that would, but work. it's not impossible. I, I don't see that. He happening probably shouldn't have faked black endorsements if he did that. We did not. We did not win South Carolina. In fairness, gentlemen, thank you. Tomorrow on Rising, the one, the only, Nina Turner. She's going to join us here in studio. She's going to share all the latest from the Sanders campaign. We always get excited for yeah. that. And also Aaron Mate is going to unpack the House impeachment report with us and what will actually matter from its publication. We hope you guys have a fabulous day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. See you tomorrow.